WWDC Keynote Wrap-Up, Part 4, the final part. This is Mac Voices. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by Text Expander by Smile, the makers of world-class software. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more and download your free demo. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. This is part four and the final part on our conversation about Apple's WWDC keynote with the Mac Voices Live panel. We broke it down into easy to digest parts because there was a lot of discussion here and it went on quite long, both because of the opinions of the panel and just the sheer volume of announcements. So we've covered a bunch of them up to now. We still have a couple panel members to go to pick things that they felt were the most impactful to them, or at least the most important as they saw it. So let's go back, wrap it up, and let the panel do the talking. Jeff Gamut, get me get me back on track. Oh, oh yeah. I'll, I'll give you two things. Did you just say that? I know. You know how bad it's gotten when wow. someone says, Jeff, can you get us back on track? <laughs> <laughs> um, which surprisingly is exactly what I'm going to do. First up, uh, the announcement that that Siri will be uh, an option for third-party devices. Holy crap. Now, yes, you still need to have a, an Apple TV or a HomePod mini uh, as a bridge, but holy crap. I mean, mm-hmm. that's huge. And uh, and that's, I think, a very important thing to help uh, increase Siri adoption. I mean, you can, yeah. you can buy uh, a, a toaster with, with the A-Lady on it, uh, actually, literally, you can buy a microwave yeah. oven with the AD yeah. on it, straight <laughs> from Amazon, and you can buy tons of devices that have G Lady pre-installed as well. But the only place you can get Siri access is if you have something with an Apple logo on it. But that's going to change, and I and I think that's really big, and I think that's really big. important for uh, for uh, overall Siri adoption. Absolutely. And uh, then the other thing that I think is uh, is big, but uh, it didn't really get coverage in the keynote, is what's happening with Find My. So uh, now, let's say your iPhone gets stolen, and you and so you go into Find My on your iPad or your Mac, your friend's iPhone, whatever, and you tag your iPhone as stolen. Okay, not only does it lock down, but if it gets sold to someone else, like wiped, factory reset and wiped and sold to someone else, they those people or whoever gets that phone, when they go to turn it on, it's going to come up with a happy warning, letting them know that they're holding someone's stolen iPhone. Mm. I, I think that's a big persist. thing. Yeah. Um, and another thing that that's coming out of that is, let's say your device gets stolen or lost and either shut off or the power dies, there's now an option to be able to track that even with the power off. <laughs> and I don't know all the details on that yet, but uh, you can bet I'll be testing that. And then the other thing, which is a kick in the pants to tile, uh, if you have an AirTag, you can now set it in iOS 15 so that if it's not near you, uh, like you walk away from your keys, you'll get an alert. Hey, you left your keys behind mm-hmm. sort of thing. And, and yeah. with tile, you have to pay for a subscription to get that feature. Yep. Yeah. I literally got the phone uh, notification today. Like if it's low in power, it will actually warn you that this is going to happen. So that's, that's really very that's cool. cool. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking sub- of proximity, I'm... there were cards too. Like the wallet thing opening up is another mm-hmm. interesting thing that Apple's letting a lot of other people into their playground because while it feels kind of like a sacred space almost like you can put Apple pay cards in there and it'll hold your tickets to stuff, but like, that's it. And so like having hotel keys show up in there this year, which was the thing that they, they announced um, house key things that are going to happen are going to be able to, to happen like with, Uh, like was another piece of that, like sort of opening things up the prox cards with the work with, you know, your work badge badging you in and out of places. Like if your work phone can also be your work badge, that's pretty great. So it it was 
overall, what I saw a lot of Jeff was opening up, uh, letting others, uh, letting others play in the same sandbox. And I'm finding that to be a really interesting change in Apple's approach. I've been shocked that I haven't seen the privacy advocates go nuts over the fact that you're going to be able to be tracked with the, the power off and, and all that. I mean, I would have thought that they would have gone out of their minds. And so far, I have not seen that. That's because they don't know about the feature yet. <laughs> Doesn't it? Well, is, that's part of Find Me, though, uh, isn't it? It was, yeah. yeah. But I don't think they so. Unless you unless it. you trigger find me, then it it doesn't happen. And I mean, those people know. Even if you even if you power down your phone, there's still a chance you could be tracked. Yeah. So, like, if you don't want to get tracked, don't take your phone with you. Yeah. You leave your but, phone at home. Yeah. Well, Patrice, also, also, do not your, buy your a phone service from provider the knows where you are. Your service provider knows where you are all the time. Sure. Does it hurt when you do that? Well, then don't do that. Yeah. But, but it just, again, you know, because there was... Today, also do not buy a phone from the FBI. (laughs) 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 Uh, iPhone FBI X. But there was Mm -hmm. such an uproar over the, over the AirTag thing. I mean, the, so people were going out of their minds. And then, you know, a couple of weeks later, Apple announces, yeah, we'll be able to track you whether, you know, your phone is on or off. And it's like, don't worry, crickets. Chuck, the, the articles and, uh, and the YouTube videos and the news rants about it, they're coming. Mm-hmm. It's yep. this, this was a feature Apple didn't announce, but you have to read through all the stuff on their web page. Reading. Yeah. And that, and that's when I saw this stuff, and I'm like, "Holy crap, this is cool!" Uh, and so, what what's going to happen is uh, is someone somewhere that has enough visibility is going to read this, and they're going to be like, "Ah, I can get a lot of clicks from this one," mm-hmm. and they will, and then everyone else will will uh, jump on it too, and it'll go crazy. And uh, and Apple's going to have to make some sort of statement, and it'll it, it'll be stupid. And, and it'll and the be whole all time, your fault, Jeff, because you talked about it here. And yep. it's all my right. fault. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and at and the same time, go. even though I've been saying, why are people flipping out over AirTags, which actually has some security features and privacy features built in? Why have they not done the same thing with Tile, which has been around for fifteen years? Yep. That's fair. Yep. Because exactly. you knock yeah. off the person that's on the pedestal. Oh well, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's totally it. Yeah. yeah. So what we did think with MS, good... as we did IBM. It's Patrice. it's a good feature though, because I mean, what is the first thing that that nowadays happens when someone steals an iPhone? They shut it down. It's mm-hmm. the very first thing. Mm-hmm. So this way, this doesn't work anymore. I like that actually. Yes. So the the moral of the story is: bad people out there don't steal iPhones. There you go. Steal all the Androids you want, but don't steal them. <laughs> yeah, Except right, nobody exactly. wants them. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah, that's you can't a get that voice is live. Yeah, you can't can't get any money out of them. No question. You can still put it in a Faraday cage. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But then, but then you can't sell it. The Apple it's Faraday phone, cage. Can't leave the Faraday cage. Pro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be kind of obvious with the thief <laughs> running down the street carrying a little birdcage like thing with an iPhone in it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not not going to work. So who didn't have a ch- uh, a, 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 a chance here? Did I, did I get everybody? With people popping in and out. Oh, Jim. Jim, didn't you? I thought you were in early. Jim, are you frozen? <laughs> no, he's, yeah, I think he's frozen. You know, I see, I'm he's still on. downloading oh. all the betas to all his devices. Hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you keep freezing. You're freezing, Jim, I, but we can hear you. Am I there now? We can hear you. Oh, oh, there you moved. I can see myself. <laughs> on the yeah. You can't hear me. Yeah, we hear you. We can hear you and see you now. I don't yeah, your what, bandwidth has been kind of. Wet, I don't know wonky. what's with my internet. Uh, I am not downloading betas. I don't install betas. So uh huh. I don't. Um, oh, chicka wow. So, um, <laughs> you know, my overall take from a developer point of view is: first of all, this was a con- consolidation year. We, we had two blockbuster years in a row for, for developers. Two years ago, we got Catalyst and SwiftUI. And last year, we got 
arm Apple Silicon. So we don't have anything like that. There's no huge blockbuster this year. But in fact, I've seen some people say, oh, this is sort of a snow leopard year. Yeah. Um, and um, I think for developers, in some way, that's true. Like usually, you know, developers are like, oh, my God, I've got to, you know, I, I don't get to have a summer because I'm, you know, spending the whole summer, you know, implementing these new APIs. And it doesn't look like that is the case too much, you know, unless maybe you have some app that you want to add this sharing, you know, for the, you know, a few developers that do that. But for most developers, it doesn't seem like, you know, there's not going to be this huge rush to, to implement new things, which I think is kind of good. I'm, you know, um, there's still hundreds of sessions with stuff. So I'm pretty yeah. sure there's a lot of things that we well, haven't even seen. Yeah, but not, well, <laughs> you know, the, the flip side is, Although there, there's no blockbuster, like big, like, oh, this is the massive, you know, we just gave you a, a whole new platform, basically, mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. last couple of years. But there's just tons and tons and tons and tons to the point where, I, you know, like you said two things. I, I can't possibly identify two things. It seems like there's 50 things. And, you know, a bunch of you have all mentioned, like, you know, this thing and everyone's like, yeah, that's revolutionary. And it seems to me like we could probably come up with 20 of those at least. It's, it's amazing that how, how much, uh, you know, how many little things, you know, and it's just like, you know, like this little thing that, Oh, nobody even noticed that. And like, that, that's huge for that, for that thing. And it's hard to even keep track of it. So, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's pretty exciting as far as that goes. Um <clears throat> Then another thing that I noticed just in the, you know, the programming sessions that I watched so far today as, you know, I, I'm a Mac developer. That's my main thing. And, you know, there were a number of years where WWDC was fairly Mac free. And, you know, we, we kind of scratched mm -hmm. our heads and wondered, uh, you know, what's going on with the Mac? Is there going to be a Mac? You know, is it just going to go away? Um, and that has really turned around and it, it, you know, it's very interesting. Like so many of the sessions are like, you know, and some of this was in the keynote and state of the union too, but in, in, in the sessions, um, you know, like, and this is available on iPhone, iPad and Mac, and this is available on iPhone, iPad and Mac. This is available, you know, everything's like available on, on all the platforms. And and even the you know the demos uh, you know where they're showing code examples, and it seems like they're they're it's about half Mac and half iPhone and not much iPad. Interestingly, I don't know why that is, but lots and lots of you know Macs and they they jump back and forth in the sessions even, like you know here's this app and and I made it you know and here it is running on a Mac and here it is running on a phone and now I'm going to go back to the Mac version and so. It's just a, a, a huge jump in the emphasis on the Mac uh, from a few years ago, um, which is ex exciting to me. I, I think, you know, also a, another thing to that I want to say about there's been some like, you know, well, why doesn't Apple do all this and that? And why don't we have, you know, logic for, for you know, and, and Final Cut for iPad and stuff like that? You know, I, I think these these are just like, A, they're huge projects that are, you know, it's not like, oh, yeah, somebody decide and, you know, these are multi-year projects. And Apple is in the middle of this huge transaction that's like, it's going to be a decade, I think. It's pretty clear that Swift UI is the future. It's not the present, but it's, it's the future. And in... You know, a dozen years, everything's going to be in Swift UI, I think. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, uh, are you going to rewrite Final Cut in UI Kit? And then, you know, in another five years, you're going to rewrite it in Swift UI? I, I don't think even Apple can afford to do that. Okay. So, um, and, and as Patrice had an excellent point. I think Final Cut is a perfect example where they Final Cut was on the classic Mac OS operating system. Then they moved it to become a native Cocoa app with Final, Final Cut 10. It took years. 
Um, and then when they did it, all they got was, this is horrible. We hate this. Why did you give us this piece of shit? You know, you're, you're terrible. Well, you know what? If you, that's what, you know, you're, you're in big danger of doing that. If you do iPod, iPad apps of, the, of, of, of those apps. Where you um, have to compromise. Yeah. Yeah. And especially, um, Look at Photoshop. Yeah. Look, I mean, look exactly. at the flag Photoshop got for the, for the iPad app. Yeah. And that doesn't yeah. really look like it's a successful product, I don't think. So, you know, I, 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 I don't think we're in any danger of those professional apps really, uh, uh, you know, being real things on iPad um, well, for a long time. Not, I, I'm not saying never. Uh, and, right. You know, and that's the really interesting thing is that I'm saying is look at how, you know, you look at how Apple is like, you know, like in their, in their programming things, they're going like, oh, well, here's the same app on, of course, the, they're little demo apps. They're not Final yeah. Cut. Um, yeah, it's order and, smoothie. And, and, and when you go and look on developer forums and stuff like that, and it's like, yeah, you know, Swift UI, Swift UI is like, it's really, really great and fun for an app that does exactly what, you know, but the minute you go outside of, you know what it's designed to do and it just luck. like really falls down and it's full of bugs and it's it, it, it's slow and crashy and you know i don't think you can write you know a big app in in that yet but that's going to change they're they're you know they're going to they keep working on it more another big tranche of of improvements oh. in swift ui this year um but all across the board there's improvements in app kit there's improvements in ui kit um, you know, and I, I think we're going to see a few consolidation years. This is the first of, mm -hmm. of a bunch of them. Um, Patrice, Patrice, bring your comment in from the, uh, from the Slack, because I think that's a really <laughs> great point. Um, it's a big chance for the Indies. I think like the, it's <laughs> since Apple can't, Apple is in a catch, as Jim said, Apple is in a catch 22. They can't, they can't do the pro apps because anything they're going to do, people are just going to slap down massive chance for the indies like for the pixel maters for the affinities they can come in with specialized apps written from the ground app that do the things that people want to do without even competing with the big app like without even competing with them maybe maybe final cut is going to die eventually maybe uh, apple's I, I, not I, interested in being in the yeah. final cut business anymore maybe I mean, they got logic well, but maybe they're not interested in final cut yeah. i mean they got out of the photo business there's no aperture anymore I mean, they have photos, but it's like not even close. It's not for photographers. No. It's for exactly. people who have iPhones and occasionally want to see those pictures on their Mac. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree on that. Today's edition of Mac Voices is supported by Smile, the makers of Text Expander for Mac, iPhone, and iPad. Text Expander is the best way to get more productive with your Mac. A few keystrokes can correctly enter your phone number, your address, a paragraph of text, or a page of code into whatever you're working on. And it does it the first time and every time, correctly, and in a flash. That means no more fat-fingering information that you know so well. You do that by setting up what Text Expander calls snippets. You set the content of the snippet, you decide what keystrokes or phrase you will use to trigger your snippet, and you're done. Your snippet is now ready to use. If you're a one-person operation, that can be an incredible time saver. But if you're in business, Text Expander's value jumps exponentially. Now, when a team member uses your snippet, not only do you get accuracy, but also consistency for whatever your snippet is about. A service call response, a tech support answer, Text Expander makes sure that what you once said is what is said. Find out how Text Expander can make a difference for you and for your business at TextExpander.com slash podcast. Click the link now and you can be starting to tap the power of Text Expander in just a few minutes. TextExpander.com slash podcast. Check it out. Thanks to Smile, the makers of Text Expander, for their support of Mac Voices. I think yeah. also partly it's a horsepower issue. I know we talked about like having a lot of headroom before, but doing audio processing, doing video processing on a on a computer, whether it's a mobile device or not, is a lot takes a lot of horsepower. Takes you know, there's a reason that you can't run Maya on an iPad. You know, there's a reason it's hard to run it on a mere mortal laptop. There's a reason that machine costs what it costs because 
uh, because of the amount of stuff, the amount of, of processing power that you have to pack into it in order for some of those things to work the way they need to work. So I think it would only be a recent development that maybe this is a point where uh, being able to process audio competently is a thing that's possible or process video competently is a thing that's possible in the way that logic does it in the way that final cut does it. I think that might be part of it because you can't even give people a minimal app that then can have plugins until, you know, until you have an app that can take that file and render it the way it needs to be rendered or compress it the way it needs to be compressed. And that's a very different process. And that takes a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I know a tiny bit about it and it's a lot of work and it's a whole lot of very specific stuff that needs to happen. That is really hard. Um, I have a question for Jim though, after all this and hearing all of the love that the Mac got this year, um, I would like to know how excited you are about the shiny new version of test flight. You've been making Mac software for a long time. So I feel like you've probably had to run betas by hand already. And I want to know how you feel about a test flight, making some of, hopefully making some of that easier for you. Like me personally, couldn't care yeah. less. Um, it's only for apps in the Mac app store. I'm not in the Mac app store. Oh, okay. So, and, you know, it's not a big deal. I, you know, actually, you know, I, I, I don't find distributing beta to be a, to be a problem and and gosh I don't have to run it through and get it approved or anything so um you know I I, I you know I guess maybe people in the Mac app store will will think it's great I, I don't know I don't I don't have an opinion in one way or the other but it's not gonna make any okay. difference at least unless I at some point decide to to be in the Mac app store Okay. Um, not sure you have to be in the I Mac App Store. I mean, you yes. have to submit it, but you no, don't no. have to. I, I, I actually, um, mm. I got into the, the lounges yeah. um, today. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I was looking at that a couple hours before this, and that exact question came up. Somebody okay. asked, um, do, do you have to, uh, um, you know, is it only for Mac App Store apps? And they said yes um <clears throat> okay so um yeah because it has to be submitted through app connect so it's the it's it's the yeah. same mechanism but you know i think it's good that they're doing it because there are people in the mac mac app store and also presumably there's you know hopefully there's going to be more and more people with an ios background that are you know shipping catalyst apps and mm -hmm. they're you know of course they don't have to use the mac app store but some of them will right. will yeah. want to and they'll be you know, glad yeah, to didn't have lose that. much if they do it. Yeah, I didn't realize it was Mac App Store only. And I've talked to a number mm. of Mac developers who were super excited about it, and that's why I was curious what you thought. So, um, guys, it's, we need <laughs> to wrap this up, but I, I have to throw in one that I'm I'm kind of shocked that it it didn't make the the grade here, and that is iCloud Plus, and yeah. all the all the associated features under that. Um, and I we're not going to that up. Yeah, oh, Jeff brought it up. Oh, I'm sorry. It, yeah. And I, in your defense, Chuck, the show has been going long enough that we're already on to iOS 16. So yeah, just <laughs> that's the part you missed. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Well, I guess I specifically the one that, that kind of caught my attention because it's it it solves a potential problem for a lot of people is the ability to you know do the multiple iCloud addresses. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, email. Yeah. yeah. That that. Yeah, that was great. That that is so nice because there's so many times that I'd like to buy something, and just you know not give and even one of my alternate email addresses out, but just have a a one time transaction, mm -hmm. and you you don't you, this would will give you that option. So I feel like my use of my iCloud email address or the disposable addresses will go way up. Mm -hmm. so, Did you know you can add a plus to a Gmail address and you've got a new email address? <laughs> That works with most email uh, email uh, providers most email and email systems. Will let you, yeah. Plus shopping. Yeah. Plus, yeah. Sketchy, I used it all the time. Spammer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. but it's it's a natural extension of uh, the login with Apple thing, because there yep. you could already do right. it. Do you want to hide um, But it was only limited. Yeah. Yeah, it was only limited to that one feature. Yeah. yeah. And how about the, you know, they're going to give you enough iCloud space for three weeks to up uh, up. To get all your, stuff your device mm -hmm. that's brilliant that's Find massive for, brilliant. for a lot of people yeah. that don't yeah. you know what's even iPhone. smarter just give people enough to start with but 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's a whole other topic. Yeah. Don't start that. I'm not. I'm just, I'm, I got to get the jab in because honestly, I've rolled my eyes at that so many times. I can't believe they're not stuck. Anyway. um, Guy guy is being attacked by a cat. I am. (laughs) Um, The other thing that's interesting about that is that also iCloud Keychain will do uh, one time passwords for you now, time based one time Mm -hmm. passwords. Um, So instead of having that six digit code texted to you, it can yeah. be something that that iCloud Keychain manages, and part of the reason that th- that stuck in my brain is because last Friday, uh, when I was doing the preview, that was the thing that Andrew Orr said was on his wish list was it would really be nice if we got some expansions to the the Keychain app and the stuff that iCloud Keychain can do for you. And this is a big one because on a fundamental level, that will help everybody be more secure, just like the the disposable email addresses. Also, um, time-based one-time passwords, TOTP is usually what they're called, that little text code that you get. Um, Having that be something that isn't sent via SMS to your phone, which is an easily hijackable attack vector. So if somebody wanted into your stuff, it's a very easy thing for somebody to hijack that and have it come to their phone and they can start just going through and resetting all your passwords. So having that- Or using a third-party app. What? Like- or, or using a third-party authenticator app like that also right. gets replaced by that. Right. Yeah. And so having it be something, again, that, that comes to that intersection of security and convenience, just like having iCloud pass, like iCloud Keychain, like go ahead and just make that password for me because I know you'll remember it. And so it could be long and weird and have dashes in the middle and, and be a bunch of gibberish and I don't have to know what it is. And now that it's nice and long, I know that I don't have to worry about getting hacked because I didn't use my cat's name backwards and now I'm super secure, you know? So that's the kind of stuff that makes me really happy that Apple does that kind of stuff. It's not going to get attention. It's not going to be a big deal. It's not going to be something that, that people really think about, but everybody who just sort of gives up after getting prompted by iCloud keychain for the umpteenth time and starts letting it save passwords, fine, save the password, fine, save the password, fine. Show me the code, fine. Making that, happen for people in a very easy transparent way is just going to make it better for everybody just like time machine did helped helps a lot of people with backups all these things are not without their problems i know every one of these comes with an asterisk but making things fundamentally safer fundamentally more secure fundamentally easier to do so that you can be safer and you can be more secure and your data can be locked locked down in some particular way is super awesome and it's never the kind of thing that's going to get attention when it happens, mm. like nobody's cheering about this. Like Andrew and I are going to be the only people that are like time-based passwords. Woo! Like we're it. <laughs> so because nobody cheers for that kind of stuff, it's boring. It's not universal control, universal command, universal command. It's not that. It's not the thing where you can drag your mouse from your computer to your iPad and looks like witchcraft. It's not that. It doesn't look cool. It's not awesome. But every time they do something like that, that feels like something behind the scenes, it's you, everybody who uses Apple hardware and software and ends up using something like that, even if it's accidental, their life is better. Mm-hmm. That's Another awesome. cool um, thing like that. Did you see that you can now log on to the services on your Apple TV with yes. your phone or your iPad? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And Tom, Tommy and yeah. Tommy in the chat room points out that iCloud plus allows using your own domain too. Yep. So mm-hmm. another also just- very interesting idea. Yeah. I heard more thing opening tonight. the gates and letting more people in. Like yeah. it's an overall theme. When you I know. turned on my Apple TV tonight, I had left it. I had left it on, turned off the TV so that I wouldn't lose. You know how YouTube works. Yeah. I turned it back on, and here all the apps I had opened over the last week were layered. You know, like you see on an iPad, you can you can do the the apps you have hidden in mm-hmm. the back, they oh, were like yeah. a card deck. I, yeah. And I can't, I can't figure out how that happened or how to uh, do it again. I think that's, t- was it double tap the, I think, the TV I think button? Uh, or is uh, it the menu button? Yeah, I can't I remember. The button. No, double tap menu gives you the screen saver, so it's something else. Okay, yeah. then it's double tap TV brings up the app switcher. Okay, and, and holding then, and then, TV long. Gotcha. And then you can uh, swipe mm-hmm. back and forth. <laughs> To, to see all the different apps. And if you swipe up, it gets rid of them. And yeah. So this is what your recent apps, like Command Tab? Uh, yeah, of. but on Apple TV. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really. It's like on iOS. Now, now it's worth <laughs> coming to the show. 
Okay, so double tap the deep down. <laughs> now, <trying> now. <laughs> See, Jim, if, if you don't learn lot, something Jim. every day, you're just not living. Wow. So well, the, apparently the checks aren't clearing. But speaking of checks, by the way, is so is Apple going to send John Gruber a 30 uh, percent check now that they've uh, included Markdown in the core operating system? <laughs> Good question. Uh, they'll probably one, send him 15 percent because, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah, you know, small business. It's not a, it's not a million bucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you call him and ask him that, Jim? We'll, we'll see what happens. It's it's already been mentioned. Who Tim or John? Yeah, it's, yes. it was suggested on Twitter that that Tim uh, John needs to send Tim an invoice, and mm -hmm. you know, should he send it to Apple or to Tim directly? <laughs> <laughs> Folks, this has been interesting. This uh, it, it it's it's fascinating and. It, it sort of reinforced. I didn't say much at the beginning, but I know there were there were some folks that have been saying this was kind of a boring keynote, and and all. I, I felt like you know there was so much to it that there were parts of it that did get a little long if it didn't interest you. But it also felt like there was always something coming along next. So mm -hmm. you know, I felt like Apple should the, hire us. I felt like it was the right. Oh yeah. Size. Oh god. <laughs> the stuff that we got, like we didn't get seismic shift like we got last year. Yeah. And I don't feel like you can yeah. dismiss it as a bolt tightener as your snow True. leopards, your mountain lions. I don't think it was that either. It was it was just right. It felt like we got some interesting usability things that are coming as end users. There's interesting stuff that's being made available to developers so that more folks can come play in this particular sandbox. And it so it felt like, yes that two hours was a wall of announcements and it was hard. And there's a bunch of stuff that slid right off the back of my brain. I know it's caught in my hair. I know it's but a lot the, rest, the, 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 the whole thing felt overall, like they were the right size features that we were getting, like things, things that are new, things that are different, aren't massive. The things that are being refined are better. And uh -huh. overall, yes, it was a little long, but overall, like it felt, it felt like it was what it needed to be if that makes any sense at all at this point. Imagine yeah. if this is what Apple does on lockdown. <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point, Jim. So let's go around the room, let everyone know where they can find you and um, and we'll get out of here. And I, I do want to... Yeah, I do want to say just a couple of things before we do that. Um, first of all, I want to thank the chat room. Um, they were quiet. They they kind of came along in spurts and all, but thanks for all the comments, guys. Really appreciate it. And also, if you're listening to this um, after the fact recorded, I will obviously have split this up into a number of different pieces to make it a little more digestible because <laughs> trying to absorb this all again would just be impossible. So I'm going to reverse the order at this time, um, and that puts David Ginsburg up first, at least on my screen as it currently is. David, where can folks find you? You can find me at InTouchWithIOS at InTouchWithIOS.com. Actually, uh, both Kelly and Jeff are born, going to be on the show this week. They're talking oh about God. WDC, so that's <laughs> going to be fun. David's uh, not insane. We're not on at the same time. Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I was trying to make Chuck feel better. Dave. I don't feel better. Um, and then uh, uh, Kelly is also going to join me tomorrow night at the Suburban Chicago Apple Users, my iPhone, uh, iOS special interest group. She's going to be that's speaking, right. which I'm looking forward to that tomorrow. And that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, right. I'm and speaking. yeah, well, you're just. <laughs> We're, 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 we're co-speaking and uh, you also can find me at on the Mac show with the British tech network on, uh, on Fridays, most times. And uh, I'm on Twitter at Dave G 65. Thanks as always Chuck for having me here. Hey, thank you, David. And I just want to point out that, okay, big deal. You've got two of them. I've been wrangling eight or 10 here tonight. So <laughs> you're, an amateur. you're an amateur. Uh, so this will, be, this will be an amateur. All right. All. We're all <laughs> amateur or Ted smart. Mark. Well, yeah, <laughs> both, both. Kelly Gamont, thank you for being here. Um, I, I know uh, David just told me where we can find you in the immediate future, but where can we find you on a more consistent basis? Well, um, he didn't say anything about it earlier, but uh, this this week, well, five days a week, you can find me hosting the Daily Observations podcast over at MacObserver.com. And this week, in the grand dub dub tradition, um, I'm interviewing developers about the stuff that we saw this week and I'm talking to them about it. And one of the developers I spoke with was Jay Miller, who was here with us earlier. So um, you'll, you'll hear an interview from with him 
uh, coming up this week over there at Daily Observations. I'm highlighting different developers who I'm talking to about some of the different stuff that we that we got out of the announcements and some of the stuff they're excited about uh, during the conference. I have one I'm really excited to share, but I'm not going to talk about it yet. Um, you can also find me over at the Incomparable Network, where I posted uh, an episode of the Ted Lasso rewatch on the Football is Life podcast over on the Incomparable. Yeah. Um, and I'm hosting another one coming up in the future. So if you enjoyed the first one, uh, you can hear me talk more about Ted Lasso and how great it is and how much I love it over at The Incomparable, along with lots of other stuff, including I Want My MCU TV, which is a podcast where Don Melton, Lisa Schmeiser, and myself talk about the latest Disney show on Marvel+. Plus. So um, sit tight. You can go through, if you want to, you can go through all the WandaVision and all of the Falcon and the Winter Snowman episodes that we had before <laughs> uh, Loki makes its grand debut next week, which is going to be, or this week, which is going to be yeah, uh, this week. super duper fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to reunite for that. And it's it's going to be a good time. You can also find me on the After Show podcast at aftershowpodcast.com, which is Mike Rose and I. Um, when we can find time to catch up with each other on stuff, uh, we sit around and catch up on stuff. And the rest of the time, if you still haven't had enough of me talking, you can find me on Twitter as Verso. Thank you, Kelly. Good to have you. Mr. Petrie. Yes. That's you. I said oh, Mr. Yeah, again, you know? That's right. Yeah. That's you can twice. find me uh, at the... Uh, the west entrance of Walmart off Whitehorse Pike, directing people to aisle seven so they can get their barbecue tools. Uh, when I'm not doing that, I have the uh, my own blog, uh, ympnow.com. I write a monthly review uh, for Screencast Online magazine. Uh, you'll find me here on Twitter. I am at fpetrie on Instagram. Um, at P H R A N K Y. And I would like to say I'm going to be a guest on a podcast of somebody we all know, but I'm not going to tell you who. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. And I, I just came out and I saw it and God, I'm a rotten interview. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, Kelly, Kelly, I have to tell you, maybe this will give you a hint. You'll like it because the shot we did at Max Stock for that yes. video. Yes. It's in it. <laughs> it's been found and we have it and we put it on air. Oh, you just could have asked. I would have given it to you. For, yeah, I still have it. I have all. Oh, the, you still, all oh. The, yeah, I have all the raw footage from that. Yeah. Oh, we we couldn't find it, and uh, the interview we right happened to find it. Yeah. All right. Should be interesting. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Frank. Good to have you as Thanks always. Thanks for having me back, Jim Ray. I know we were having just a little bit of bandwidth problems for you earlier, but it seems to have leveled out, and I'm glad because you gave us a lot of great input. Uh, where can folks find you when you're not attending WWDC virtually this year? Um. I, my day job is ProView Development, so ProView.com. We do uh, Macintosh database software. And then on Twitter, I'm uh, at ProView Gem. And I see that we have run longer than the keynote here on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, you know, we, we didn't even mention you can now write apps on iPads. Yes, you're right. We oh, did. that's right. We no, can keep going yeah. for a little bit, and then we'll be yeah. the same as the keynote and the State of the Union put and together. State of the Union together. <laughs> Another hour. <laughs> same as <I'm> Thursday. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Jim. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, it's, I should report to the folks that are doing just listening to audio that um, Guy Searle has his cat in a stranglehold, down and in a stranglehold. So good, good job, guy. You, the, you... the cat's holding up a little sign that says, help me. Help me. But <laughs> <laughs> what it doesn't area. know is, uh, is I've painted a cave. I've painted a cave on a solid wall and pretty soon it'll be like right into it. Do you that have his address so he can happy. write notes? Oh, man. Guy, where can we find you? Well, when I'm not entertaining my cats, you can find me on the MyMac.com podcast. You can also find me in the um, uh, Mac to the Future live cast that I do with with uh, Dave and, and Warren Sklar. 
Uh, let's see. There's Guy's Daily Drive, which I finally started doing more of. And uh, Twitter is Mac Parrot and Vert Shark. And uh, Vert Shark over on the, the tubes of you to see all of the uh, the vids that I that I put out on a regular, somewhat regular basis. Great. And very Thanks, few of them God. have cats in it. So, okay. <laughs> well, that can be your next podcast. Yeah. Guys, happy cats. cats. Happy cats. Happy cats. Happy cats with Guy Searle. Yeah, that sounds Yeah, good. <laughs> and microphones. All right. Oh, jeez. Let's not do that again either. Okay, Happy daughter. cats and microphones. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> Dot com. It's his new show, The Perfect Microphone. That's right. Uh... <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I am so sorry. Yeah, Jeff Gambit, after You're that, not. you should be. You should be. Go to the folks on you. Um, well, but when I'm not making really bad jokes, mm -hmm. I, I, I actually am sorry about that one. Seriously. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram. I am Jay Gamut both places, and you can check me out on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jay Gamut. And, uh, let's see, Tuesday nights here, Thursday afternoons on the big show, Friday mornings on the Mac show this Thursday night on in touch with iOS and, um, uh, I did Mac OS Ken all last week and someday this week. I'm just not sure which one. Anyhow, I get around. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Good to have you as always. It's always a blast. Patrice, this was your first Mac Voices Live. Uh, will you be back or have I'm you? So sorry. No, Absolutely. I, I will not. definitely be back, but it might be a while since I'm <laughs> usually working. Like I took tomorrow <laughs> off. So. Uh, yeah, that's a, oh, that's a great excuse. Patrice, that's you have the best excuse. excuse in the world to not come back, and I don't blame you a bit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I really She's want to. I really want it. 4 a.m. there now? Uh, yeah. yeah. 4 Wait, where are you? So it's almost um, in Austria right now. Austria. So. Central Europe. I, I mm -hmm. So where can folks find you, Patrice, when you're, when you're not um, here and during this, uh, this torture? <laughs> it wasn't torture. It was fun. Like I had a lot of fun. Um, you can find me every week with Jeff and with Chuck and with David on, uh, well, different shows, the big show on Wednesdays and the Mac show on Fridays at BritishTechNetwork.com. Um, I have my own podcast, not tech related at all. I've done some interviews. There's one coming up with David Ginsburg about a lot of food in Chicago. It's very, very interesting. Sounds sketchy. Um, that is foodieflashback.com where I talk about, like, oh, I interview people Instagram. about food and everything that is related to food, food-related memories, everything. Um, I also want to mention, I was very happy that both Kelly and Brittany had the same watch bed as, as I had. So <laughs> we talked about that in the chat. Nice. <laughs> that was kind of an accident. We did not coordinate it, but that's fun. Not at all. Yeah, and you can find like all the links and everything I do on thepatrice.com. There's only one. It's me. <laughs> Thank you for being here, Patrice. And and just a word of advice, folks, if you want to listen to Patrice's podcast, it's sort of like the the rules for going uh, to the supermarket. Don't do it on an empty stomach because you will mm -hmm. go right to the kitchen and yep. punch out. So. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> Yeah, so just be careful. Be careful. Last but absolutely not least, Ms. Brittany Smith. Brittany, thank you for uh, for showing up. I know that that you are very busy, and I appreciate the time. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Chuck. So, where can we find you? Are you just you just show up here and hang out? <laughs> <laughs> On Twitter, I'm ADD Liberator, and this week I have been and will continue to do some live streams on YouTube, just chatting about new iOS features or uh, Apple announcement stuff, and um, and and how they interest me, and and just kind of ramble for a bit. Great, She's already she got beta a, videos, you guys. She did a beta review today. I caught that. Watched it. I just wow. watched it. Yeah, I don't know if that's against the rules or not, but. Um, it actually worked really well. So it was... what are they going to do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, it's not good. like Apple's going to fire you. Yeah. Right. Good. And, and so, I will make sure yeah. I have Brittany. You you don't have a, a a vanity URL for YouTube yet, do you? I am eleven subscribers away. Okay. So, All right. So you know, everybody. If anybody I wants will have... to do that, I can. Yeah. And then I have I to decide have... what it is. <laughs> 
I will have links in the show notes to Brittany's YouTube channel. Go there, folks, subscribe, <laughs> help her get to that, yes. uh, to that magic number so she can get her domain. Do it. You did it for Jay. Do it for Brittany. <laughs> did. You did so she's much for prettier. Jay. Yeah. yeah. She's she's much prettier, <laughs> trust me. And she likes keynote. So, you know. <laughs> See, we can pick on Jay because he's not here. I like this. <laughs> oh. you, know, you can pick on him when he is, too. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. talk about that microphone again. Oh, jeez. Oh. No. No. No, I, I went and looked at that thing on Amazon. It's Jay's it's microphone. Not, that's almost like it's bigger than Guy's cat. <laughs> All right, we're off the rails, folks. We're That's gonna it. we're gonna get out of here. I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices Live again, Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We'd love to have you join us in the chat chat room. Thanks again. We'll see you next week, and to everyone else, we'll see you next time on Mac Voices. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page. And get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices, or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.